All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Maximum Football. I'm here with uh, game director uh, Micah Brown. Micah, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Excited yeah. to be here. Cool. So um, we did our next phase uh, beta, you know, I don't know, what was that, back in June? It was a long time ago, right? So um, yeah. we're several months past that, and we've had an opportunity to both, like, check out the community feedback that we received and also implement some of the you know changes that you guys kind of have mapped out and so i thought it would be a cool idea for us to get together talk about some of those changes that have happened since the next fest build and uh you know splice in a little bit of comparison to to show the progress uh that's being made so um so yeah let's hop in and just kind of as we're playing if there's things that you're uh you're seeing that you want to point out feel free to um uh, yeah, feel free to shout them out. So, um, I think one of the first things people will notice is some of the new like camera work that was added. Um, in do you want to talk a little bit about um, the adjustments? Um, yeah, the camera work is a big one. We completely got rid of the old system we had and implemented a new system. And the replays are much much smoother now. Uh, transitioning from from camera to camera is much smoother. We also have better transitions. So we used to only have the maximum football logo. That kind of transition from every screen to every screen. A lot of people kind of complained about it. Hey, fumble. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice. Um, one cool thing about fumbles, by the way, is that if you have a running back who's kind of weak, like weak strength, he'll have an increased chance of fumbling if he gets hit while he's doing um, a spin or a juke. Mm. So you'll see a lot of that. Yeah, and the quarterback is also one of the one of the other updates we have we've made since Next Fest is that. If you hit the quarterback while he's passing the ball, if he's already at like the tail end of his throw um, and the ball is, hasn't been released yet, then you can affect the pass. It'll kind of like, you know, just lopsided out of him. Um, he'll throw a lopsided ball. And if you hit him before his arm uh, starts moving forward, you can cause a fumble. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Talking a little bit about like the ratings and stuff. I know that, you know, when the next best beta came out, not necessarily all the ratings were kind of like turned on and implemented and impacting the game, how the team saw it fit. And I know a lot of that has been changed. Um, and I know the running game is one area that received a bunch of improvement as a result of some of that um, with like linemen knocking guys back in, on run plays, you know, uh, having better logic in, in the past plays. What are some of the other changes uh, just in terms of so, oh, I'll delay a game. I'm talking nice. too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of the other changes on the offensive side of the ball, just in terms of like how the ratings are now impacting the on-field play. Um, so you know what the the block. This one isn't necessarily tied to ratings. Well, it is tied to ratings. Okay, so the offensive linemen. Um, we have a whole new suite of blocking animations where they actually push defensive linemen backwards or push them. Uh, you know, diagonally back, diagonally right, or they're stationary, whatever. But, you know, there's there's much um, – the offensive lineman can push them back, and they can also be pushed back. So if you have a very powerful defensive lineman, he can actually push your offensive lineman backwards. And this happens right at the moment of contact and then all the way through the blocking engagement. Um, and it actually, it, it's been a huge difference to the running game because it opens up so many more running lanes um, rather than just, you know, the offensive lineman holding a guy stationary or moving him left or right. Because that did open up running lanes, but not nearly as much as if you start actually pushing all defensive linemen backwards or sometimes if they push the offensive lineman backwards, it creates so many more running lanes. And it makes it all way more fun. It's just more, it's much more fun trying to follow blockers. Yeah, even on that touchdown play that I just ran right there, like the center kind of fired off the line and got a pancake block. And then, like you're saying, it's a lot. There's a lot more kind of logic behind the angles your your linemen are trying to push guys with, you know, perspective of like yeah. how the how the play is designed. Yeah, um, exactly. And also the you mentioned the ball carrier. So the um, the ball carrier, he's his juke and his spin moves have been. We have more variation to them now, and they're they've been, they're a little more powerful now. So previously, they didn't work as well. They um, honestly, they felt a little janky during the next fest build, in my opinion. They didn't. They weren't always as reliable as we wanted them to be. Even if you had a guy who could, with very high spin and juke attributes, he wasn't juking or or spinning very well. So we fixed the animation for that, and we fixed you know how far he actually jukes, and how fast he actually jukes. 
and it's all tied to the attributes. Um, it always has been, but it feels much better now to run with the ball carrier. The play art is a big update. Previ you know, previously for this entire project, pretty much the play art was really just functional and we used it to just, you know, see what the players were going to do on the development side. It really wasn't all that pretty. And ooh, was that, did you take control of that guy? No, I didn't. No. He okay. Just, he kind of <laughs> ran off of it. Yeah. 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 There's small issues like that, that you'll see uh, every now and then we're still working through some of that, but overall the, uh, overall, the, honestly, the, the passing and catching has gotten so much better. Compared to Next Fest, the, the QB throws it much better. The receivers catch it more realistically. The attributes that affect the passing make, make so much more sense now. So if you're running around and running at full speed, he's less accurate. Um, if you have a defender who's just, you know, coming down on you and about to hit you, uh, some quarterbacks will get a little more scared than others and they'll throw inaccurately. And it all just feels so much better to, to throw it and catch it now. Yeah, there's also been some changes to like the the pass trajectory when you're when you're throwing the ball. I'll hit pass into the interception. That's something else that's been new that I've noticed a, a lot more of kind of the the heads up plays from both offensive and defensive players on balls that are in the air. Mm -hmm. And the tip balls are pretty cool now. They can they can bounce off of multiple players because the ball is you know has um, it's completely set up with physics so. You'll see the ball like bounce off a player's arm and then another player's wrist and then another guy's face mask and then you know somebody else will catch it or something. Some some really wild stuff happens, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool when you see it kind of bouncing around in slow motion um, in some of the replays. You you mentioned physics and I know it's something that a lot of people ask about and so maybe now's a good time to kind of better understand what we mean by like physics based gameplay because. We definitely have animations for like tackling and you know basically everything in the game um so can you explain a little bit like the relationship between the mocap animations that we have and the physics that are within the engine itself yeah yeah so you know we still have a long-term plan for physics you know there's still a lot of work to be done left uh, um, until we there's a lot of work left to do until we have the physics uh, tackles set up the way we really want them the end goal is something that's comparable to like backbreaker physics. So, you know, we'll constantly be working on the physics until we get to that point. Um, but the physics that we have in now is uh, it, it does a, it does a good job of adding variation. You can see the physics, um, especially if you go into slow motion. Um, and a lot of times, what it is specifically is it's the physics gets layered on top of a, an existing animation. So, we trigger a tackle animation the same way. Uh, you know, we use the players, we use the players' weight, their momentum, their attributes, um, how fast they're currently running, all that stuff in comparison to the player that hits them. And we use all that information to figure out, you know, is this player, first off, is the player tackle, tackled or did he break the tackle? Um, and is this player big enough and moving fast enough to knock back the other player? And, and once we know, once we figure out all the momentum and all that kind of stuff, we, we choose an animation that's appropriate. So we choose a tackle animation that fits the situation um, based on the attributes and all of the speed and momentum and all that stuff I just mentioned a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And then once it's already chosen and it plays, and it's, while it's playing, the physics gets added to that animation. So um, an example I gave before is sort of like, you know, it's sort of the fat jiggling around on the bone, you know. So you, the animation's going to move the way it normally moves, but a lot of like the arms and the head and and a lot of different, like the waist and the knees, they'll bounce around during the animation um, based on the physics. And so, so you know, it's a little, it's not complete, it's not completely um, backbreaker level of physics, not yet at least, but it is the beginning. It's the first step to get there. I would actually I'd say it's about the second step to get there. Um, and, I, you know, it does, it does create some really cool tackles. Um, a lot of times you'll see, you, you know, you might end up seeing the same animation often for a tackle, but if you look closely, you'll see that it plays out uh, differently every single time that you actually trigger the tackle. And we've added a lot more tackle animation since the next best beta as well. Like, just, I mean, even that last touchdown run I just had, right? Like the little spin off broken tackle that, uh, that happened to nice. my running back. Um, you know, that's something that you wouldn't see in the next best beta. And we did a, we had another mocap session, even right, right after um, after the next best beta to, to capture even more. Yeah, we've had a handful. We've had a handful of, of mocap sessions since the next best beta. 
and we've been we've been pumping out tackles ever since. So we have a lot of new tackles, and a lot of the suction tackles that were in the next best build was because we didn't have enough tackles to handle every single situation. So sometimes, you know, you'd be tackling somebody from the side and we'd have to trigger like a tackle that's from the back left rather than from the left. Uh, so it would, sometimes it would cause the players to sort of snap into position in order for that animation to play out correctly. Oh, that was pretty cool. Nice little swat there. Yeah. Is that a user spot? Oh yeah. I was, I was going to mention, you know, at, right after the next fest beta, one of the things that we, said we were going to address based off the community feedback was kind of control responsiveness. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can definitely feel that on, on the SWAT. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the other responsiveness issues that were maybe addressed since next fest? Yeah. So the user SWAT and the user catch during next fest was kind of a mess. <laughs> it was, we had just pretty much gotten it working for the most part. And it still wasn't user friendly very much at all. So we went into that playtest knowing that the user swat and the user catch was kind of janky, but we wanted to get feedback on it, and so we left it in there. Now it actually works. It's actually fun. It's it's consistent and it's reliable. You can block the punts as well, uh, user block um, on the punts. It's pretty cool, and you can run that back for a touchdown if you would have picked it up. And it and we handle all the the punt block situations uh, mm. correctly now. It's pretty cool. Um, nice. I think that's the first punt block I've gotten while playing this game. So that, yeah, nice. that's cool. It might be a little overpowered right now. We might have to um, figure out a nerf it, or we're probably gonna have to create. We don't have yet a, a punting play that's like max protect, where you bring in the gunners who are out on the side and have them block so that nobody can you know break in through the middle. So we'll probably address the issue because right now there's too many blocked punts. So we'll probably address it by creating a a, a max block punting play. That's the QB slide. It's new. Mm -hmm. That one's in there. Yeah, don't have to take big hits with your quarterback anymore. Can get protected. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, also talking about some of the some of the changes in the pass game. Uh, I know that one thing the the team was talking about in the lead up to the next fest beta was kind of that cornerback wide receiver uh, interaction. Um, and, and the fight for the ball. Um, what are some of the changes just in terms of like how pass defense interacts with pass offense? So the, during the next fest build, the receivers did not actually even have the ability to, they wouldn't go cut off the route early and go try to go up for the ball if they saw that a defender was going up for it. So during next fest, a lot of times what you saw is a, is a defender going up for a swat or going up for the interception and the receiver would just not even react and the receiver wouldn't break from the route and go try to, you know, fight for the ball at all. And since next fest, we've fixed that completely. So now the receiver and the defender, they both actually go up for it. And it's a game of positioning. It's in the game. It's a game of attributes and timing so you know if you're the user you can try to time the interception oh nice look at that <laughs> you can try to time the interception or swat yourself and you can try to get it but there's actually you know a much it's much more realistic now the receivers actually go for the ball if they see that it's in danger they'll go up for it and the safeties are on it now they're always going for it at its highest point during the last play test they weren't doing that a lot of times they were just kind of watching the ball go by their face and we had a big issue where safeties weren't even swatting at the ball sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that has been completely fixed. Um, you know, defenders are going for the ball. Also, just that's a new one right there. That was a new broken tackle animation and a new tackle animation. Um, I think that, thought that looked pretty good. Yeah, that looked good. That's the first time I've seen that little, like, behind the back kind of attempt. Mm -hmm. Well, player, I don't know. I think I saw you just pull it up, but... Yeah, defensive yeah, play really arcs nice. fixed. So. Ooh, that's a new tackle there, too. Yeah, and this post-play camera, like you mentioned earlier in the call, the post-play camera, um, you know, the pre-snap pre camera, all this stuff looks way nicer now. So there's also been some changes with, like, the locomotion to, to players and the way that their momentum works. I think next time uh, we're pre-play, I'll kind of show how, how that's impacting. So... Can you talk a little bit about the difference in how weight and momentum and all that was versus like in the next best beta versus what we're seeing now in this build? Um, yeah. So, you know, we had a lot of that working in the last one. 
we just it was kind of hard to see that it was working because we didn't have as many tackles so we would end up you know we would run the calculation of you know the weight of the players the momentum of the players and we'd pull up an appropriate you know we'd be able be able to identify what should happen but we didn't have the correct number of animations to actually trigger correctly what what should happen um so you know even now um so you know if if you have a big player a big heavy player and you're running full speed into somebody into like a smaller player you're you're going to win that battle you're going to knock him backwards um you know so the weight of a player the speed of both the players and then their attributes so their strength and um you know their break their broken tackle attribute or their tackling attribute all that stuff is going to factor into it and 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 it looks much better now than it used to you know it's still not perfect we still have to get far more like that one looked like like that what we were just watching right there that was a little too heavy on the defender there like he kind of knocked the running back back a little too much on that one and in order to fix that really we just need to record more and create more animations that that you know like a defender tackling a ball carrier directly backwards that's not as powerful and then you have to have one that's much more powerful you basically have to capture these at every speed and every angle for broken tackles and for tackles and then a lot of times you have to do that for different moves like spins and, and jukes and, and hurdles and all that other stuff um but you know we've been setting it all up so it's just a it's just a process of recording you know constantly recording the new mocap and then getting it processed by the animators getting in, getting it into the game and then getting the developers to hook it up to where it plays in the appropriate situation and so it's just a you know, continual process of doing that over and over and over until you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tackle animations. Yeah, I think one thing that I've just come to realize, I think, while working, seeing you guys work on this game while I'm kind of playing build after build, is just the complexity of making a simulation football game, right? So can you speak a little bit about the, to like the challenges that come with, you know, trying to create 11 on 11 football? Yeah, the simulation is it's, it's tough. I don't know of another football game. I mean, I don't know of another sports game. I mean, soccer, yeah, I guess. But there's really not any other game that's as complicated as football. We have 11 players, and almost all of them do different things, right? Like a quarterback is completely different than an offensive lineman. It's completely different than a running back, which is completely different than a linebacker. They all have these different behaviors that have to be programmed, and, and they all have different movements that are very specific. Like an offensive lineman in a three-point stance looks different than a defensive lineman in a three-point stance. And for people who know football, they can see the difference immediately. Like immediately. You'll immediately know, like, oh, that guy's an offensive. He's sitting, you know, his back is too high up or something. Um, you know, he's, he's got too much weight leaning forward, so he's probably a defensive lineman in three-point stance. You know, people can notice it really quickly. And so, you know, a lot of times in this, in this process of building this game, um, you know, like I'll – talk to an animator and they'll show me a new animation they're working on and it's a and they've tried to add you know they've taken a tackle animation and they've tried to make it a little cooler and so they've tried to add just a little more umph to the tackle and you see it and it looks really cool right and it's like this looks like a really cool tackle but it's just not necessarily a realistic tackle right like the extra umph that you want to add into it makes turns it into like a superhero tackle um which would make sense and we could absolutely use it if it wasn't a simulation game but you're constantly trying to hit real targets instead of made up the targets in people's minds. You know, these are real targets that people ha that you have to hit. The tackles have to be realistic. The QB has to move in the pocket realistically. Um, and that's what people expect. And they've seen it over and over every single week. So, and, and it becomes, it's really tedious. It's very hard. You know, it's very hard to, to get the players to go from looking almost correct to looking absolutely correct. And when you're almost correct, it's like you're off-brand cereal. But that was another punk block. Another block punk. Yeah. And I got rough. Let's go. Oh, nice. I wonder what. I hope we handle this one correctly. Let's see what happens. Let's see. You should. You should. You should keep the ball. Nope. But that's okay. Oh, We're still working some of that <laughs> stuff out. That, that's, yeah. an, that's just another thing, right? Like the, the rules of football are, are complicated and there's a lot of different scenarios, you know, multiple penalties mm -hmm. can happen on a play, you know, changes of possession and things like that. Um, so I think, uh, honestly, that's kind of a, a great representation of just like, that's not a very common thing that you'd see, right? Like a roughing the punter yeah. block punt where the 
the receiving team yeah. recovers, right? So, uh, I, is that like the a- big things for week two of the next Fest beta was the real speed update. And we said in the video that we released right after about how it was kind of a um, just a quick fix, like we just kind of turned a knob up for the speed and it didn't really address anything else. Um, and I think you see now it's a lot less kind of skatey, there's all the weight and things like that. So, what did we learn about? kind of gameplay speed from the feedback in the next fest beta and how has that translated to the build we're playing right now so the, the main feedback we received in the next fest build was that the game felt uh, a bit slow and it was a lot of feedback that said that and it wasn't and for us internally it was like okay the game feels a little bit slow we can fix that and it wasn't a big it wasn't a you know internally the problems you know, the, the play testers will see a problem and they'll say, oh, this is a huge issue. And internally, we're like, oh, this is like, this will take us no time to fix this. So the speed issue was one of them. Um, the overall gameplay speed, we fixed it in no time. We could, impre- we could in- we increase the game speed for all the players, for everybody on the field, and immediately it made the game faster. Um, and so we quickly just wanted to show people. And th- we released that during the play test or during the next fest build just to show people like, hey, we can make these updates super quickly. So, you know, don't think that this game is too slow. Just it was a tuning issue and it's something that we addressed very quickly. And so we, you know, we, we updated it, sped the game up, sent out the patch and let people play. And a lot of people said, oh, this feels way better. And a lot of people loved it. And there were some issues with it, of course, because it was a quick update that we made. And, you know, there were some situations where things were a little too fast and we didn't just, you know, obviously we, we pushed out a fix for it within a couple of days. So it's not a perfect fix. It was mostly just to show people that, hey, we can do this very quickly. So don't, you know, don't worry too much about the game feeling slow. It's something that we can fix in no time. And then since then, we've just been perfecting it and we've kept it at a faster speed, but we've slowed it down where it needs to slow down. We've tuned, you know, different rotation rates so it, the, the players don't spin around too quickly. And now the game feels super responsive. It feels so good. Um, you know, it was very useful to get all the feedback from the users because we didn't notice that it was too slow. Um, you know, we had talked about it internally back and forth. Like some people internally were like, ah, it feels a bit slow. And then other people had gotten used to it. So they're, you know, they didn't see the problem. They said, oh, it feels pretty good. You know, it feels good at the speed. You know, that's one of the big things in the play test is that there's things that we can fix easily that we just don't know about. And, this, and the game speed was one of them. We needed everybody to play and just immediately, you know, fresh eyes on the game. They immediately were just like, oh, yeah, this feels too slow. You know, it was obvious to them immediately. And so we fixed it. And in this next field, you know, the, the next time everybody gets their hands on it, they'll notice it pretty quickly. Like, oh, this feels feels much better, much faster and much better. For that touchdown run right there, use the new improved kind of uh, juke animation. Uh, I know when we were talking about this right after Next Fest, you were talking about a couple like frames of lag that were in the animation that have been uh that have been taken out um so is that really like the the only change that was made with with the juke or uh, i know you mentioned some stuff with like uh the distance and and those sorts of things as well there was a few things so like specifically what we did um the quick fix that we did during the play test was um the entire game was actually being played at like 0.80 0.8 speed so the entire game was actually being slowed down by about 20 percent during the next fest build and internally, we thought the game made sense at that speed um, at the time. You know, like I said earlier, a lot of people had complained about it internally, but some of us liked it, some of us didn't. And so as soon as we heard the feedback that the game felt too slow, we said, OK, we just need to put it at full speed because, you know, we had it at 0.80, at 0.8 speed, which means it was already reduced by about 20 percent. So we said, let's just get rid of that and play everything at the real speed, you know, at the full 100 percent speed. We did that, pushed it back out. Um, to the next best play testers and everybody seemed to like it and but you know some issues came with that there's there's a lot more work than just changing the global game speed of everything we had to go into tons and tons of animations and do the hard work of identifying every animation because making the game feel responsive there's no you know magic um you know there's no like magic pill or whatever for it or silver bullet or whatever it's you have to do the hard work of going through all your animations and saying, okay, this animation has an extra step that's not needed. All right, let's get the animators to cut that out. Okay, cool. Let's send it to the animators. They cut it out. Cool, get it back in the game. We'll see how it looks. Looks good. Perfect. Let's keep it. Next animation. You know, this one has one too many steps. 
before the, like one too many steps before the player catches the ball, which means that when it triggers, the player is going to do one too many steps before he actually gets the ball to catch it or whatever. So we had to go through pretty much every animation and say, where can we cut out the beginning and where can we cut out from the end? Extra steps or little extra movements that just don't make the game responsive. Um, and so it was hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of animations that we went through. And we spent so, we spent a ton of time just analyzing every animation in the game to make sure that it was as quick and snappy as, as possible. And so, you know, that's kind of been one of our main focuses since Next Fest. And I think everybody's going to see it pretty quickly. The game feels quick. The game feels fast and it feels responsive. It's super responsive. Yeah, I feel like in the Next Fest build, you kind of felt like you were maybe adjusting a little bit to that responsiveness you you had to you know juke a little earlier spin a little earlier press the pass button a little earlier and yeah now it just feels a whole lot more like when i press the button the guy on the screen does what i expect him to do yeah yeah exactly so i know there's been a lot of just general changes to to some of the defensive movement as well um you want to talk a little bit about kind of what that means and uh what it looks like on the field for defensive movement, the so there's a lot of pre-snap stuff that was just we had to clean it up, sort of like when a defensive lineman needs to adjust left or right, um, and if he adjusts too far, does he get out of the three-point stance? And when he does that, how does it look? You know, he has to transition from his three-point stance out of the three-point stance and has to look good. And then what if the ball snaps while the player is moving? You know, you're, you had a defensive lineman moving left or right, and the ball gets snapped right in the middle of that animation. And how do you blend in and out of that? So we did a lot of fixing for that kind of stuff. So a lot of the pre-snap movements all look much better. They've all been fine-tuned. They've all been polished. I don't think it's perfect yet, but it is pretty good now. It's much better than what it used to be when they would just robotically snap into position um, in different ways. So that looks much better. During gameplay, when you're actually controlling a defender or AI is controlling a defender and he's moving around, has gotten tons, absolute tons of work. So you now transition in and out of every strafe, every sprint. You go, go from sprint, sprinting forward to backpedaling, from backpedaling to strafing in any direction. And it all just it flows together very smoothly now. Um, during Next Fest, there were a lot of situations where like, transitioning, if you were strafing to the left and then you let go of strafe so that you could sprint in the same direction, right? So you're, you're strafing left and then you want to sprint left. You know, transitioning from that strafe to that sprint sometimes had an extra step in it and the player would uh, like hitch for a quick second or slow down for a quick second in between that transition and so there were there were little issues like that everywhere you know like going from the forward sprint transitioning into a back pedal it had an extra step or you know a back pedal into a side strafe it had an extra step there were a lot of little situations like that and it just slowed down the defenders and, and it actually caused a lot of gameplay issues as well because you know defenders are trying to move around and they need to turn on the dime right defenders have to turn left right the agility has to be very snappy and they're trying to make all these turns and the animation was slowing them down and so you had defenders who were basically just losing the receivers you know the receivers were you know doing three turns in their route and by the third turn the defender had already lost three steps and so the receiver's wide open and so, you know, there's a lot of situations where not having immediate, you know, responsive feedback for the defenders was causing problems. Good kick, by the way. I'm nice. so nervous. I'm terrible at kicking. Oh, it was short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we spoke too soon. Uh, you aimed it perfectly, though. Yeah, you're whooping them anyway, so whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get to see a little more defense now, at least. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're coming up on the end of the game, so I, oh, uh, not nice. much more defense. Well, we're going to run this one back. So, um, Yeah, we're coming up on the end of the game, and I, so I want to, you know, I know there's some stuff that we didn't get a chance to kind of see just in this game. I know one thing that people were asking about was, um, you know, defenders being able to knock the ball out of a receiver's hands, like if you hit them at the point of the catch. Um, that's something we've added, right? Yeah, that was a big one. It's pretty cool too. So if you can hit the def if you can hit the receiver right as he catches the ball, you can knock it incomplete. And then if you can hit him like after he takes a step, so he catches the ball and then takes a step, he now has possession of the ball. And you can if you time the hit right, if it's hard enough, then you can knock a fumble out of the receiver's hands. 
so it's it's pretty cool it, it i mean i love it. I have fun trying to time the try, try to trying to time the tackle correctly but yeah that's new okay yeah so obviously tons of strides made since the next best beta and uh, i think you know it, within this video you can see kind of side by side those those changes what is the team focusing on now in terms of just the gameplay like what what are the the next things that you want to uh you're looking to improve that you're looking to add uh, just to the on-field experience to the on-field experience is cleaning up bugs that's the biggest thing right now is it's actually just cleaning up this things like that what you just saw right there there's like that's a bug where sometimes over the shoulder diagonally the receiver doesn't catch the ball very well so that's one of the issues we're gonna have to fix um but there's a lot of little issues. There's a lot of little um, quality of life gameplay issues that we still need to smooth out. Sometimes it looks kind of weird when like a blocker connects with a defender in certain situations. So there's just lots of little things that have to be cleaned up. And and it's not those. It's no small task, right? We've been waiting. You know, the polished portion of this is really what's going to set the game apart. Um, and, and we have a lot of things to polish right now before we before we launch the game. And it's going to improve a lot of what you see. So it's no small task. And I know it sounds kind of nebulous. It's like, oh, we're just going to polish things. But it's much needed, right? It's every single part of the game has to be polished. It sounds dumb, I know, just saying the word polish. But, um, but everything, you know, everything. Like even looking at the play art right there, the thumbnails, sometimes the, you know, the, little, the little zones are too high on the play art. They need to be lowered a little bit sometimes so you can see all of it inside of the play art. You know, there's a lot of little things that happen. Um, that just have to be smoothed out before we launch. And so that's our main focus. And then besides that, it's all networking. So there's a lot of bugs. It's a, there's a lot of exploits. You know, once users start getting in, they, they're really trying to win. You know, they're trying to win the game. And they, if they find a route that works all the time, they're going to exploit it. And they're going to do it over and over and over again. So a big part of what we're trying to do is figure out where the exploits are and then trying to figure out why it's an exploit. Why is that working the way it is and how to fix it without like a hacky solution, you know, how to properly fix the issues. Um, so a lot of that, but mostly networking. We got to make sure the game is network friendly so that when you connect to online games, it's fast and you're connecting to people who are nearby and people who are close to you in rank and skill. And so that's pretty much our main focus. Oh, also, I'm sorry. Also, um, moderation of the customization, you know, making sure people don't put bad words all over their logos and, and stuff like that yeah so uh one thing so i do want to mention on this on this last drive is some of the uh the kind of late game logic we're seeing the the cpu using timeouts throwing to the sidelines getting out of bounds um that's something that's been changed since Final since the beta course. right home team yeah correct yeah so there's a lot of uh, little ai issues in late game that were um you know, those, it's kind of a polished feature, too. So that's some of the st stuff we've had time to fix recently. So, you know, when the offense is losing and it's the end of the game, they're going to start trying to throw it outside more often um, to out routes. Um, the offense is also going to manage the clock and call timeouts much more appropriately. The defense will as well. And if the offense is winning, they'll, they'll properly try to drain the clock. So, you know, we've made a lot of updates to that, to whole play calling and clock management at the end of the game. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time today, Micah. A uh, lot of awesome changes to the game. It's taken such huge leaps since uh, since that build in June. And uh, if you guys are interested in checking out Maximum Football, wishlisted on Steam right now, and it's coming to Steam Early Access on November 7th. Um, and then, it, you know, we'll keep working on it, keep improving, and then it'll be coming to console uh, at a later date. So, yeah, thanks, Micah. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for having me.